Hi, everybody. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Today we're with George Papadopoulos. George is one of the founding partners of Professional. And we're going to talk a little bit, find out, you know, what George is thinking these days, which is George is always going to have some thoughts. So welcome, George. Thanks Thank for you. hanging out. Thank you for having me. So a couple of questions. So you've been doing this for a while, and we, we, you and I talk a lot about what could therapists, what would you do different? How would you teach therapists? Like, what, what, what aren't they doing these days that you like to see more of? I... I try to tell the therapist to not treat the diagnosis as much as treating the patient. And what I mean by that is we do evaluations, we look at range of motion, we look at strength deficits, but we don't look at what is the instigator or the igniter or the inhibitor of that diagnosis. If, for, for instance, you have a patellofemoral patient you know, people will say, we'll go to the knee, as opposed to saying, we need to go to the proximal joint. Look at what's going on with their hip, what's going on within their core. Um, that, you know, and then, you know, go from their, their therax, you know, is the therax, which is appropriate, which we all use and do. We have protocols, we have uh, proper uh, uh, therax programs, stretching as well. But is it beneficial for the patient? Is the patient using the right muscle? Is it, is it, are they recruiting properly? That is the big thing that I feel that, because myself as a novice therapist, you know, 27 years ago, I made those same mistakes. And they're not mistakes. They're things that we, I, I, as made me better, a better therapist and makes a lot of our therapists better. Let's go, like, for example, so you have a patient with a shoulder problem. You know, uh, what kind of mistakes or what do you see out there that people maybe are dealing with shoulder patients that they could do a little better with? So I always, you know, would look at my range of motion and I would look at someone's internal rotation. Uh, now I make sure I take everyone's shirt off. Now I make sure that I videotape everyone posteriorly. So I'm, A, respecting their, you know, their, uh, their identity. Uh, but I'm making them, I'm showing them the disparity that may or may not be within their scapula as they have movement. Simple, active, forward flexion, abduction, internal rotation, external rotation. We may have external rotation, but is it trunk rotation? Okay, being able to isolate that and then say, what is the pro why is there a problem here? Right. I think it's hard for a young or all therapists to kind of look at and to kind of be able to figure out where to start. You know, their observation skills. You look for certain things when they move. Are you looking at general? Or do you look at take your fingers on the shoulder blade? Everybody does it differently. What's your thoughts? So I first go general. I first go kind of global. I look at it and say, does it move properly? If it doesn't, then I say, what is the trigger? So if I, if I take internal rotation, you know, if the scapula starts moving when I start extending, there's something that's tight, okay? Is, if the scapula and the humerus are moving at a one-to-one -one as opposed to a two-to-one, something is tight. So that's the, that's the first thing that I saw. Now, what is it? I need to find it. Um, my next thing is if the scapula elevates, protracts, anteriorly tilts, what is it that's doing that? Is it the upper trap? Is it the levator? Is it the pec minor? Is it corcobrachialis? What is it? And try to uh, uh, address that. Yeah, do you, do you, uh, how do you test those? Do you test those muscles? Do you palpate? Or? So I, 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 I palpate. First, when you, when you see the, the movement, if you can, you can slow, you can basically uh, the, play the video in a slow frame by frame that you can see, wow, now the upper trap immediately fired first. Um, and then the next step is you do palpate. I use your, my palpation skills to see where is the hypertonicity. And th from there, I then say, okay, if this muscle is on, and what I mean by on is, is contracting or over, overutilized at the time, what, what is its antagonist that I can address because we know the agonist is going to be on, the antagonist is not going to fire. So I try to go to the antagonist, facilitate it, try to make it work, 
so I can inhibit that muscle, make it shut off. And sometimes, that, many times, it doesn't work. It's something else. You know, I, one thing I haven't even spoken about is, you know, what is your, your, your relationship to your spine? You know, um, we think of shoulder. We never, not, I wouldn't say we never, but when I was a, a, a new graduate, I didn't go and say, oh, is there an FRS something? Is there, is there uh, a, a restriction somewhere that's causing the movement to come from above or below? It's just being able to kind of break it down segmentally, and it doesn't always happen on the first day. I think the first day I look at the global and then try to uh, address. Um, if there's a pain cycle there, can I do something to eliminate or decrease that, that pain through you know, my, my evaluation and then treatment thereafter? Okay. So you see an upper trap is tight. Do you have a sequence? Like kind of, you know, it's one of those things that are hard to figure out. Where do I go next? Do you do all the, you look at lower trap, you look at levator? Like, so uh, I, I will put, so um, I credit you guys because uh, the, uh, on our technique peaks, we, um, we had, a, I think it was Donis that you put in the prone pillow and you guys were working retraction, depression, you know, diagonal patterns of that scapula. Um, so I have a patient now who um, has these issues, and the upper trap is overactive. I'll put him in a prone pillow to test to see, can he activate his lower trap? Can he really retract without using his upper trap? Um, and then addressing, if the upper trap is the igniter, I go immediately to its antagonist. And I then try to say, well, what, is, what are also the synergistic muscles that may be working to either suppress the lower trap or working instead of? Is it my infraspinate? Is it my, my rotators? What is it? And see if I can address those, what it does to my upper trap. So you say phosphate. So you would go mobility. Once you found the tight, you would release it, and then you would activate the other muscle. Yes, I tried. So I, I one thing I preach uh, a lot today is mobility. And what I mean by mobility, it's not necessarily just joint mobility. It's um, uh, our secondary stabilizers. Okay, we all know we have a shoulder that's unstable. They come to us, and we want to get it strong. Make it stable. What are we making strong? Our dynamic stabilizers, which are our muscles. If I can mobilize a joint and there's no real restrictions, the restriction in range of motion is from adaptive muscle shortening of some type. Now I need to find it. I need to address it. So for me, it's always mobility, then come back with stability or try to get muscles to fire once again. Do you have again. a favorite kind of way of releasing muscles? Or? I, listen, I, I do a lot of pinning. I, I take uh, uh, an active release technique and do more of a pin and release. Uh, my upper traps, you know, you'll do anterior, you'll do the anterior fibers, the posterior fibers, you know, just rotation in a supine position. Um, I also will use it where I get them to rotate and forward flex. Um, Do you have a certain rep? Or do I I, I'll do, I, I first try but with, with five. I just do five because a, first, first thing, sort of, a lot of people may not be able to tolerate it, and you, you'll, you'll uh, understand how much pressure you, you can put, and you'll know you can, you can grab the upper trap. Uh, but I start with five, and then I immediately say, Put your arm behind your back, or just do the restrictive movement. Do a re do one of the releases, and immediately after, ask them to do that functional movement again. That person may or may not, for the most part, they should see uh, a little bit of increased mobility or less pain with that uh, movement. And then I progress. And now I say, okay, so I started proximally. I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna go up to to its insertion. But I always try to stay over the muscle belly as opposed to going over to the and tendon. And is there homework that goes with it? Typically yes. Yeah, I literally, I, I, I will teach my patient and say, look, I want you to do exactly what I just did. So if I 
we find the tight spot, and I say, okay, I want you to rotate, rotate, rotate. And you will find patients that are compliant with this uh, will we'll come back either with less pain, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, motion, but this is not the be-all, end-all. We still need to use our therapeutic exercises. We still need to use, uh, you know, scapular stabilizing exercises that help us. Uh, uh, we release and then we, we, we stabilize. Okay. And how many, like an exercise program, how many, how many will you get for homework? That's the problem with patients, so I get these. So, 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 so I, I try to give my patients more stretching, and then in my shoulder, their Therex program is more scapular depression, more in the pillow, more put uh, your towels, and really learn how to control your shoulder blade as opposed to doing it with your upper trap. Any exercise, whether it's scaption, forward flexion, if there is an overactive trap, uh, uh, upper trap, I will put them in supine and say, you can't do it in standing until you can master it in, in supine and then make the next day. I, I, you know, you'll, you'll see many patients doing this, and we're, and it, we're not helping. So it kind of brings me to another, so part of, uh, we find that outcomes, if we pick all our outcomes, we have a company that has a little bit more trouble than anything else, the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Do you have a philosophy of like why we, why is it, why is it so hard? Uh, it, it has the most degrees of freedom, so it's very, very difficult. Uh, it has probably more origins and insertions than any one of our other joints has. Um, and, you know, like your trunk, that you could be 50% and 50%, or you want to be 50%, most of us sit at a computer, or we're here. I think our evalua evaluation procedures, we are always taught to perform range of motion, clear our neck, clear our shoulder, range of motion, manual muscle test, sensation. So we cleared the neurology, we've cleared range of motion, we've cleared strength. Now our next step should be mobilize and look at the tissue. What are the restrictors? And I don't think we look at the restrictors as much. You know, we work in an open environment. We do evaluations in open environments. Um, and we may feel uncomfortable to tell the patient to take their shirt off, his or her shirt off. So we just say, okay, they have internal rotation to T12 and, but is it real internal rotation or is it compensation? So I, I think that's the one thing that I try to tell people. When you're doing your evaluation, you can do your evaluation and actually do a little test, retest, treatment to find what is the restrictor, what is stopping them from forward flexing. So we had to pick in the last part one, just one piece of advice to give a new therapist. They're out there, they're starting, they start tomorrow. Where do they start? Where do, they, where do, you, do you have any recommendations for them? Know your anatomy. 27 years for me in the making, um, and those who know me and work with me, I travel with a... Um, a manual muscle testing book from neurokinetics on my phone. And I'm not embarrassed to pull it out. I'm not embarrassed to look at it. I'm not embarrassed to make sure that I review that I am testing the, the muscle properly because that helps me with my evaluations, especially within my shoulders. I feel that understanding your anatomy and then the next step is the kinesiology of the anatomy. And that really puts you in a great position to understand what you're viewing. I think next time, we're not going to do it today, we're going to talk about customer service. I know well, it's something you oh, I like feel that. highly about, but we'll pick a, a different session. But I want to thank you. Thanks for Oh, I appreciate it. Fun. Thank you very much for having me. Um,
look we'll forward see, to we'll doing it. We'll see if we have you back. Thank you. <laughs> so this is uh, Rob Shapiro in the mind of. Thank you. <laughs>